Hello and welcome to this section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to learn about Kirchhoff's voltage law. Right? So in the last section we talked extensively about the Kirchhoff current law and I hope that you see that these things have complicated sounding names but Kirchhoff current law is very simple to understand conceptually. Kirchhoff voltage law is also simple to understand conceptually and I'm going to take you through some steps so that you can truly internalize it because you're going to use these things so much that you really need to have a good firm grasp as to what what we're really saying. So you're not blindly writing equations, you really understand what's happening here. All right, and uh, the other thing I'll say before we get started is that the Kirchhoff current law and the Kirchhoff voltage law, they kind of go together like peanut butter and jelly. I mean, you, you might use one or the other in certain cases if you're just asked a certain question on a test. But really to truly an analyze a circuit and figure out what's going on everywhere, you're going to need both of them. It's not that one is better than the other. It's not that one is more useful than the other. It's really that both of them are required to truly solve a circuit for all of the currents everywhere in the circuit. Um, and that's why this, you know, the same guy, Mr. Kirchhoff, came up with everything. And so they're, they're, kind of, they're always taught together. Usually in your book, Kirchhoff Current Law, Kirchhoff Voltage Law, bam, you've got those. Now go solve some circuits. So what we're going to do is teach you about the voltage law here. And then we'll have a great many problems coming up to show you how to solve increasingly compl complicated type of circuits. All right, so let's just go ahead and write it down. We'll start the same way we did last time. We're gonna write it down. Kirk off voltage law. And what it says is, and I'll change colors just because I like to. Uh, and by the way, we also call this KVL. So we call the other guy KCL for Kirchhoff current law. This guy we usually abbreviate KVL for Kirchhoff voltage law because this is just too long to write. The algebraic, again that word algebraic again, sum of all the voltage drops around any closed path in a circuit is zero. That's it. It's just one sentence. The algebraic sum of all of the voltage drops around any closed path in a circuit is zero. So you see it has some symmetry with the current law. The current law was the algebraic sum of the currents going into or out of a node is zero. And here we have the algebraic sum of the voltage drops along any path in a circuit is zero. So there's some symmetry going on there. And what you'll be seeing is that the equations look similar, but the methodology is a little different to get there. Um, what we're basically saying here, remember back to what I taught you in the very beginning. I started teaching you in terms of what is voltage. I spent a lot of time. What is voltage? So you really understand what it means. What is current? you learn that current is the flow of electrons really in the circuit or we use the positive current convention in our in our analysis here but it's basically the flow of, of the current the flow of the electricity in the circuit and voltage we talked about was sort of like that potential right that potential you know if you're talking about a voltage source like the battery it's the potential to do some work so it's pushing out the charge but we've also learned is that anytime you have current going around a circuit and flowing through a resistor or any other component, you're going to have a voltage drop across that component. We've talked about that and I've drawn it in several circuits already. I've been kind of building you up to this point because you really need to 